Well, I was just about to go out and start my June garden tour just to show you what's growing and what's not. But I was about to step out of the shed and look. We have, <laughs> there's a tree across the way and I think that's where all the starlings are nesting. And they are absolutely, they love our garden. <laughs> The pond, there's a bird bath up on the top. Um, I have feeders uh, all the time, but they have just decimated the fat balls that I put out, out the day before yesterday. And I don't walk out of the shed because I'll frighten them all away. So I'll just film this for now and then I will carry on. like a scene from the birds. Oh, that's... Oh, I can still hear them, they're still out here. But let's just take a look around the back of the the shed. So this is just me. This above me is something that I did yesterday. So as you can see I had an old piece of trellis and what I've done the two posts that I put in um, with the pots, I've actually fixed the, the trellis to the post. So I'm hoping that the honeysuckle that I've got down here, um, there's also some sage down there, but the honeysuckle is going to grow up and go up and over. And then down here, I've got a dwarf balotti bean in here. I've also planted some climbing beans, but I seem to be having the same problem as everybody else. My runner beans just are not germinating. Which is a bit of a bummer. Although, saying that, I think I may have one coming up just there. Anyway, we shall see. So, this is obviously my compost area, which is going to change. Um, I mean, this compost bin is going to stay. But I think this, this one, like I said on the previous video, is going to be moving to the other side of the garden. But I think what I might do is do like Tony did the other day and plant my courgettes in this compost that I've got here. Um, it's quite low down, so what I might is just rake it over, put some cardboard on the top and then just put the courgettes on and just hopefully leave them in there. They've got a little bit of sun. Anyway, that's something that I'm going to do next week. So I will film that and show you that for next week. Yeah, so this is the area that I need to sort out. Can't get over these starlings. Stop. Bee 
bees and insect area and a little robin house. Not sure whether they use it or not. Right, we're down the... This is the back of the polytunnel rips. Don't fall over to me. This is a 30 litre bucket. Now, I watched JB last night planting uh, on one of his previous videos, his chilli planting or potting on. Um, I'm debating whether to use this for one of my chillies. When I say one, I think I might put two of the same chilli in this bucket or pepper. I think that will probably be okay. They just won't grow as tall. But I haven't got enough pots to do what he's doing. So, um, you'll see. Um, this is a pot of stuff next to the honeysuckle that's grown up the shed. And I've chucked some seeds in there and I don't know what they are. I'm wondering whether they are sunflower. No, I wouldn't have thrown all those sunflowers in there. Maybe it's oregano or basil or something. Help. I think I might just have to wait and see what happens. I think that it doesn't smell, so I'm thinking that maybe it's sunflowers that I might have just chucked in there. That, that rose is a cutting that I took off of one of my roses. And I'm just wondering whether all these sunflowers in here, if that's what they are, might be detrimental to the rose. Who knows? Right, let's get on. So, out of the front of the shed, this is my um, wooden planter that I put up at the front of the, the shed, which has got the clematis in. And my Californian lilac, or seeing over this. This is, this is the the tickets at Cianopis Concha. So there you go, that's... Oh crikey, it's going to grow to two and a half metres and it could spread to three metres. So that might have to be moved out of this, this planter at some point. Right, let's go to the other side of the shed where the starlings are squabbling. Now this is the area where I'm going to move that compost bin to. So I'm going to leave the wood pile over the back of the... So, yeah, step back a bit. This, this tree, Cambosh, is actually a privet. So I'm going to cut all these these front stumps off so that I can get the um, the compost bin up against the back of the tree or the edge of the tree and then the compost bin will fit in there and then I'll have one at either side of the garden so in against our fence that we had put in last year is some verbena banariensis that's that's grown, well, it's, it's been there since last year, so, and it seems to be doing okay. It looks a bit lopsided, but it's okay. There's something else in here, which I can't remember what it is, but it looks like it's got rust. A lot of rust. So I don't know whether I should cut that out or just cut the rusty bits out. Who knows? Anybody got any ideas? Just put them in. Put it in the comments. Thank you. Um, I have nettles growing here, which I'm keeping because I use it for my nettle feed. And then there's the beautiful foxglove that's growing up behind the privet that I've left. Right, this is another part of the honeysuckle that I cut. 
that I dug out from the other side of the shed and planted here. And I'm training it up the shed. Hopefully it will grow across the roof and then it can go right across and onto my trellis. Ha ha. Right, this is my rockery area. It's the lupins. See a japonica. I'm not holding out much hope for that, but you never know. Um, Aquilegia. I've got. I seem to have a lot of Aquilegia this year. Sorry, I'm just trying to stand this one up somehow. Um, and I think they've all self-seeded. Like I've got some irises coming up. Looks like there's a bramble in there as well. Bit of everything in here that just needs a tidy up. This is my beautiful fern. And down by the side of the fern, Crocosmia coming through here. Another holly, not a holly hog, foxglove. And then my hostas at the top of the pond. So let's go through here. Turn around. There's my the rhubarb. I've cut it right down now and just leaving it to grow again. I don't know whether I should have cut it yet, but I have. And then we come to this bed that's outside the greenhouse, which has got um, a variegated holly, more aquilegias, more delphiniums coming up. Peony, my, this is the lilac tree, and my roses that are coming up, or hopefully will go up and over the arches. Some more little blue flowers down there, grasses, and these are alliums that are coming up. This is the very first acer that I planted about, I would say that's about four years old now. Um, Antirhinums, snapdragons that have stayed there from from last year. A peony that I must have put in there. I don't know whether that will come up. This is some thyme and my giant celery plant <laughs> that I just love because it's because it's huge. Um, another acer in a pot with some sedum around the bottom and these beautiful little yellow flowers. I have to find out what they're called, I can't remember. Right, we've come to the front of the polytunnel now. Um, but I'm going to go to the greenhouse first. Now these are some white aquilegia. Box of carrots. That looks a bit, oh actually it's not too dry. I'll give that a water later. But I did pull a carrot out of there yesterday. 
and there's nothing to it. And the ones that are left in there are Chantenay. So they won't be very big anyway. The ones that I took out of here and planted in the greenhouse, which I'll show you in a minute, are the Nantes and the organic ones. Another rose cutting that I took. Doesn't look very good. Needs some water. Right, greenhouse. So this is where I've started putting my chilies and peppers that I've moved on, as it were. So this one's a chili frigatello. That's in its seven litre watering can. This one is a Hungarian hot wax, which is still quite small. The other one that I haven't planted on yet, potted on yet, is the same. Right, this one down here is a jalapeno. This one, so that's a chili. This one is a pepper, which looks as though it's got some and it's got fly. But this one is a sweet asty red and yellow. So I when they I don't know whether it has red and yellow peppers on it or whether one will be red and one will be yellow because I've got another one somewhere. Oh this is the other Hungarian hot wax which I've put in a, a bigger pot. So you can see the size of that one and it looks as though it's got some chilies on it whereas this one yep now these are quite small and I don't know whether I should take the fruits off or whether to leave them help anyway back down here this one is a oh, it's covered I don't know what to do That's a cayenne chilli, that one. This one is also a cayenne and it looks as though that's got flowers on and also green fly. Aphids, go away. Hmm. Right, down here I have goji berry plants, seedlings. Now this uh, are my asparagus that I've grown from seed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, can somebody please let me know what I need to do with it? Should I just leave them in the pots in the greenhouse over winter or shall I put them into a bed where I'm going to have them I'm, I'm not sure what to do and I don't want to lose them help <laughs> yeah so uh, and then in this bed here is where I put the carrots so the ones that I took out of that box so there's carrots in that box but they're going to have to come out of there very soon because I'm going to need it for the rest of my tomatoes or some of the tomatoes so this bed has got onions uh, a few carrots and there's three volunteer tomatoes in here one that's got flowers on already um, that one's got small side shoots which I'm going to take out and it's also got flowers this one nothing yet oh, tomato smell I love it 
Right, let's get over here. So up on this top shelf, I've got an aubergine plant. This is a Ladiva cucumber. This one's a the Ron Denise um, courgette. Two baby boo pumpkins that need to go out soon. And the Corcazelle courgette. Now these courgettes are the ones that I'm probably gonna plant on top of the compost. And just hope that I might leave them a little bit longer actually before I, oh, this one. Looks like they're growing courgettes already. Maybe I should just get them out ASAP. Right, this is um, marigolds. This one is climbing spinach, oregano and sweet basil. Oh, basil smells nice. And here are my tomatoes. And as you can see, I really need to get them planted. So what have we got? Gardener's Delight. I've got one, two, three, four, five, there's seven Gardener's Delight. This one at the back here is called Purple Bumblebee. And I have one. So I need to be careful with that one. It looks like it's got side shoots coming on it as well. Um, sweet aperitif. And I've got two of those. At the back is Money Maker, and there's two in there. Is it two? Yeah, two money makers. Tomato Roma, I've got three. And then Black Opal at the back, which is a cherry tomato. But black ones, obviously. I grew those last year and they were lovely. I've got two plants, two of those. And then up the top here, nasturtiums and some sweet peas. I don't know, are they sweet peas? Um, maybe not, I don't know, but they need to be put in the ground. <coughs> okay, so that's the greenhouse. Oh, down in that corner, down there, are some more delphinium seedlings, which I need to pot on as well. And then up here is a pine berry strawberry, which is the white strawberry. And it looks as though we've got some fruits coming. Quite a few, in fact, which is good. Sorry, I'm fighting with a watering can. And then in there was sweet corn but unfortunately I've neglected it so I don't think sweet corn is going to happen this year okay Whew. it's warm in there what's the temperature temperature is 99 I've got that one on Fahrenheit the one in the polytunnel is on centigrade um, Foster in my boot. Another Acer in a pot. Sage flowering. This is my herb bed. with an acer and a bamboo at the back and then that's my black bamboo 